A couple of videos ago, we figured out how to go from the empirical formula, from the empirical formula, formula, to the mass composition. And all I mean by that, mass composition, is that we could start with the empirical formula H2O, which is also its molecular formula. And then we were able to figure out what percentage of this was water and what percentage of this was hydrogen. The way we did it is we said, OK, uh, oxygen's mass is 16 atomic mass units. Hydrogen is 1. The mass of the entire molecule is 2 times hydrogen, 2 times 1 plus 16 for that one oxygen, so it's 18. And then we said the composition of oxygen is just 16 over 18. So oxygen is 16 over 18. And if I, now I don't have my calculator anymore. I think the number was something on the order of 88% or 88.9%, 88.9% oxygen. So now let's see if we can go the other way. Let's see if we could start with mass composition. Mass composition the percent composition of the different elements, and then go to empirical formula. Empirical formula. And I think the first video I made, I spelled empirical wrong, which, which is good reason for me not to do spelling videos. I think I spelled this with an E right here, because I pronounce it empirical, but it's spelled with an I. Empirical formula. So back to the empirical formula. So let's do some, I guess we could call it some exercises here to see if we can, if we can get someplace. So let's say that I start off with something. I need space. My periodic table is right down there. Let's say I am told that I have a, a, a bag of stuff. And 75% of that bag, 75% of that bag, let's say it is mercury. Mercury, HG. And say the other 25% of the bag is chlorine. Chlorine. So my question, or the question that I'm asked, is what is the empirical formula of, of, of the stuff that I have here, assuming that it's all one molecule or one type of molecule? So what is the empirical formula? Empirical formula. Formula. What is it? So the way to think about this is just assume, I don't know, let's assume you have 100 grams of this stuff. Right, and I'm, the reason why I'm picking 100 is because 100 is a, a a a useful number to deal with. So if I have 100 grams of the stuff, all right. So let's say I assume assume that you have 100 grams, 100 grams. If you have 100 grams, how many grams of of mercury do you have? Well, that means that you have 75% well, of that. That means you have 75 grams of mer of mercury. HG, and that means you have 25 grams, 25 grams of chlorine. You might be saying, where did you get these numbers from? You know, the percentage doesn't necessarily. Well, it, it, I got the numbers because I assumed 100 grams. I could have assumed 112 grams or 7 grams, but those would have been harder numbers to work with. So I'm just assuming 100 grams. So the question is, in 75 grams of mercury, how many moles of mercury do I have? So I need to convert from grams to moles. So let me let's let's go the other way. One mole of mercury. This is at least how my brain thinks. Let me suitable color. So one mole of mercury. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 mercury atoms. What's the mass of that? Well, it's equal to whatever mercury's mass number is in grams. So let's go look up mercury's mass number. So mercury is a transition metal. It's one of the few metals that are liquid and at room temperature. Right there, we have mercury. Its mass number, let's pick the 200, it has a mass number of 200. Obviously, there's some mercury out there that has a mass of 201. But for, this, for our simplicity, let's say it's 200. So, the, so mercury, where was I? Oh, it's up here. So one mole of mercury is 200 grams. 200 grams. How did I get that? Mercury's mass number, one atom of mercury has a mass of 200 atomic mass units. So one mole of mercury, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 mercury atoms, has that many grams of mass. So instead of 200 atomic mass units per atom, we have 200 grams per mole of that atom. It's an easy calculation. You just look up its atomic 
mass number and say it's that many grams when you have a mole of the substance. Fair enough. And what about one mole, one mole of chlorine? Well, we do the same exercise. We go down to our periodic table. Chlorine has a mass number of, let's say, 35. It has various isotopes on this planet, but let's say the mass number is 35. So one chlorine atom weighs, well, now I shouldn't say weighs, I have to be very careful. One chlorine atom has a mass of 35 atomic mass units. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 chlorine atoms, or one mole of chlorine atoms, will have a mass of, I already forgot my number, was it 35? 35 grams. So how many moles, how many moles of mercury do I have? Let me get my calculator going. So I have 75 grams of mercury. One mole of mercury would have a mass of 200 grams. So I could just take 75 divided by 200. It tells me how many moles I have. 75 divided by 200 is equal to, that's actually, I should have been able to do that. So I have 37.5 moles, or 0.375 moles. 0.375 moles of mercury. How did I figure that? One mole of mercury would be 200 grams. I only have 75 grams of mercury, so I have a small fraction of it, roughly 0.375 moles of mercury. That's I've just expressed a number of atoms of mercury I have. Moles tells me is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, so atoms of mercury. So I have 0.375 times Avogadro's number of mercury atoms. Fair enough. Now let's do the chlorine. I have 25 grams of chlorine. One mole of chlorine is 35 grams. So I have 25 over 35 moles. So what's that? So 25 divided by 35 is equal to 71.4. 71.4, or 0.714. So it's equal to 0.714 moles of of chlorine. Okay. Now these numbers, they're not exact because if you take twice this number up here, you don't get twice this number right here. You don't you, if you get twice this, you don't get this, but this is roughly I have t roughly twice as many moles of chlorine as I do of of mercury. So that tells me that for every mercury atom, remember, moles is just a number. For every mercury atom I have, I have two chlorine atoms. So the empirical formula here is for every mercury, I have two chlorines. I have two chlorines right there. And the numbers didn't work out almost exactly right. I mean, it's, it's not. Uh, it's not, you know, and especially in the real world when you're actually trying to figure out things empirically, your numbers seldom will. And maybe there's some random other things running out there in terms of other things that are contributing to the mass. But this is close enough to know that the ratio of mercury to chlorine is roughly one to two, right? For every, you know, this is a number. For every one chlorine atom, you have roughly two. This is, you have twice as many, I guess the other way of thinking about it is you have twice as many chlorine atoms in the bag as you have mercury, roughly. Although this is a little bit more. This is close to 0.75. But it's close enough for you to know that you're dealing with mercury chloride right there. Let's do another one of these. Let's see how the numbers turn out for this one. Let's say you have another bag, another bag that is 9% magnesium. 9% magnesium. And let's say the remainder of the bag Let's say the remainder of the bag, 91%, is iodine. 91% is iodine. So the way to do all of these is just to do the same thing. Assume you have 100 grams. So if you have 100 grams, of which you have 9 grams of magnesium, and you have 91 grams of iodine. And then figure out how much of a mole of magnesium, what would be the mass of a mole of magnesium and a mole of iodine? So let me write here. Mole, one mole of magnesium, and we want to figure out one mole of iodine. One mole of iodine. Let's figure those out. So magnesium's mass number is, 
let's see, let's just go with 24. Let's say we have the isotope that's 24. Magnesium is 24, and since we're already down here, what's iodine? 127. That's 127. Iodine is one of the, the halogens. Iodine. So let's see. You have 127 and you have 24. Let me write those down. So you have 127 and you had 24. All right, I have a bad memory too. So what was it? Magnesium, right, 24. So these are there. One atom of iodine has an atomic mass number of, or has a mass of 127 atomic mass units. So a whole mole of it, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 iodine atoms will have a mass of 127 grams. You just take the atomic, you just take the atomic weight or the atomic mass. And say it has that many, the, the mass will be that many grams when you have this many of the atom. So, and then one mole of magnesium will be 24 grams. So now we just figure out how many moles of each of these we have. We have 9 grams of magnesium. So, what fraction of a mole that is? A mole is 24 grams. So, this is equal to 9 24 moles of magnesium. And what is 9 over 24? 9 divided by 24 is equal to 0.375. So this is equal to 0.375, which is similar to what we had in the last problem, where that 0.375 showed up. And 91 grams of iodine is what? 91 grams of iodine. Well, in a whole mole of iodine, you're going to have 127 grams. So we have, we have 91 over 127 moles of iodine, and what's 91 over 127? I have a feeling we're going to have very similar numbers. 121 divided by 127 is equal to 0 0.716. So this one turned out, I should do another problem with better ratios than this. These have the same ratios as the last problem, 0 0.71, 0 0.72 roughly moles. Moles of iodine, and this is moles of magnesium. So we have roughly twice the number of iodine atoms as we do of magnesium atoms, right? For every one magnesium atom, we have roughly two iodine atoms. I know this isn't exactly one or two, but it's pretty close. So the formula here is magnesium iodide. Right there, and that's the empirical formula. We don't know. Maybe there would have been, maybe in every atom, maybe you had two magnesiums and four iodines. We don't know. We, all we know is that the ratio of magnesium to iodine here is 1 to 2. In the next video, I'm going to try to look for ones that have more interesting ratios, because I don't want to do two problems that both have the same ratio. But hopefully you found this a little bit helpful.